This is a troubling statistic for so many of us. One in eight women in this country are expected to develop breast cancer in their lifetime. Phase one for a new breast cancer vaccine trial out of the Cleveland Clinic is apparently showing promising results. And joining us now to talk about this trial is Dr. Zachary Hartman with the Duke Cancer Institute. Dr. Hartman, so glad to see you. You're not working on this particular trial, but of course you have extensive background in immunotherapy and this type of research. So can you start by telling us the concept behind this vaccine? Sure, happy to be here. Um, I think the idea with most breast cancer vaccines are we're trying to target a protein that is expressed in breast cancer and elicit an immune response against it and really teaching your body to go after that cancer, either in a uh, an adjuvant setting or in a new adjuvant setting to really try to prevent breast cancer from spreading and recurring in a lot of cases. So what does this latest data tell you from this at least first phase one of the trial? So this is a phase one trial, so it's a small study. Uh, it shows that the cancer vaccine that they've developed is safe. Uh, there's really no uh, side effects from this vaccine other than a little bit of irritation at the injection site. Uh, and then they've also demonstrated in this trial that 75% of these patients achieve the T-cell response. And at somewhat higher doses, a lot of these patients uh, also achieved a B-cell response. So they're actively teaching the body to go after this protein target that's really highly expressed in a type of breast cancer called triple negative breast cancer. So it's a very encouraging result. It's an antigen that we don't have a lot of data on. It's really interesting that they can get these kinds of responses against the self-antigen. And I think they're going to extend these studies in future trials, uh, combining other drugs and using it in different kinds of settings. Dr. Hartman, you know a question I get so much from people, particularly family members of, of folks who are dealing with a particular disease, is how they can be part of a trial. What would you say to them? Sure. I think if you have a family member who could be eligible for these trials, or if you're interested in these kinds of trials, you can go to clinicaltrials.gov and try to get information there. Usually there are people that you it will direct you to to uh, ask questions about the trial and to see if you could potentially be eligible and enroll in those trials. Having been part of these trials, I think we're always looking for participants. It's uh, vital for our clinical research and to try to get these new medicines into patients. So I think I would encourage patients to uh, do some research and reach out. Uh, I've gotten a number of people who've reached out to me and I always try to help them and direct them into, into different trials, even if they're not ones I'm involved in. Okay, and quickly, when could this become available? Again, this is phase one. There are many other phases. Right. So uh, it's a phase one trial, so that's very early. And typically, things will have to go through a phase two trial and then a phase three trial before they would receive FDA approval and be a drug that could be prescribed uh, by any kind of doctor. So it, it would probably be in the setting of years uh, if things go well. Uh, I think the COVID vaccine is an exception to that where things were you know, very speedily advanced. But typically it does take some time, but that doesn't mean that you cannot be involved in the clinical trial setting. Right, and I know they are always looking for a wide array of participants from all backgrounds. So uh, we will certainly have that information on WRAL.com on how people can participate. Dr. Hartman, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you so much.